Use the force, Jebediah Kerman. Use the force. Newtonian force. F equals MA, not the other one. Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. As you can see, this is an X-Wing from Star Wars and this is because Star Wars is coming out soon and I figured I'm gonna join in on the fun and build my own X-Wing uh, replica. This one is an SSTO. I've noticed some people were having trouble getting their X-Wings into orbit and as you can see, I have succeeded and uh, I'll show you what I did here and I'm gonna go through this step by step just to give you an idea how to construct these relatively easily. Now, first things first, I've decided to use procedural tanks, even though you don't really have to. You can actually do this without the procedural tanks. And what I decided to do is the middle part is going to be just liquid uh, and oxidizer fuel, basically mixed tanks. So you can kind of use these ones. This is what I used originally before I decided to use procedural tanks. And then um, I would suggest adding another one here, another half a tank, because it's a lot better to have more fuel than to have less fuel. Uh, the, the, top, uh, the tip part, you can actually just finish off with one of these things one of these aerodynamic cones or you can use something else to make it a little bit more beautiful i've decided to use procedural tank here as well just to make it cylindrical now as for the pod i decided to use the inline cockpit because it's probably the one that makes more sense and lastly um right behind it i put another tank just because i wanted to have as much fuel as possible so this was sort of the central part it, although I, I decided to make it procedural just to make it look a little bit more realistic and so this is kind of what I had using procedural tanks. This is actually uh, three separate tanks. And then um, if you look at the picture of the actual X1, it has these markings everywhere. So I decided to use this opportunity to add some solar panels because unfortunately there's no other way for me to get energy later on and you'll need it to return back to Kerbin. Now, as for my tanks, uh, sorry, for my engines, I decided to do this. So this is just an example of what I actually decided to do. Essentially, it is a liquid uh, tank, half full li liquid tank, because you don't really need that much liquid fuel, with an air intake, circular air intake in front and a rapier engine in the back. I'm going to explain to you why I chose rapiers and not um, ramjets in this case. Then we will have wing connectors here, and this is essentially just to make the wings look a little bit more realistic, and you need to put some elevons because otherwise you won't be able to control your ship. Now, why did I choose repairs? Well, for one reason. And that reason is the maximum thrust at highest speed. So for ramjets, which I usually use for SSTOs, only at Mach 3 do you get maximum thrust. For these guys, it's actually Mach 3.7. So it's actually, in other words, um, these uh, engines become most efficient at higher speeds. So you can actually abuse that and get to some ridiculously high speeds at lower atmosphere. And as long as nothing explodes because of the heat, you'll be able to actually uh, get up to like 1500 meters per second before you have to engage rip your engine secondary mode and start using the li liquid fuel and, uh, and oxidizer. Now, they're not as powerful as um, ramjets, but they are a little bit more efficient for SSTOs, and I'm gonna demonstrate this when we actually get into the air. Now, obviously, I had four of these, and so this is what it kind of looked like from the back. So there's four pure engines. Uh, I decided to use Action Group 1 to uh, manually enable mode, and so this is manual switching mode. Uh, and you have to be careful with this and kind of not wait too long, otherwise the ship will start spinning. Now, the, the worst part about this ship is the gear. Uh, unfortunately, the rear gear is a little bit um, lower than the, than the front gear, and I can only change that by actually moving this downwards, but I didn't want to do that because it's going to look very silly. So that's a problem. If you can solve that, let me know how. Otherwise, you'll see what happens. And lastly, so um, we have these markings here uh, used up by the solar panels. And this is really it. This is all there is to it. It's a very simple design. I think it's pretty effective too. And so um, in terms of Delta V and in terms of TWR, it, it does have quite a lot TWR and enough Delta V to, um, I would say, even possibly escape Kerbin. So we'll see how it goes, depending on how fast we'll be going in the lower atmosphere. Here. And here is my X-Wing on the launch pad on the, the uh, runway. And so we're gonna launch uh, this, just basically blast the engines full speed ahead. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take off until the last bits of runway because my, look at that angle of uh, attack here. My elevation is really, really uh, nose down basically. So let's not go too fast. We're just gonna try to make it to the end of the runway and then take off that way. Uh, unfortunately, the back part here, is not particularly appealing to the eye. 
and I'm sure someone out there will figure out how to make it more beautiful. And here we go, we're flying. Uh, let's decrease our thrust. We're gonna go directly straight up. Um, and I need to be watching TWR here, here because I want this to be in 1.3, 1.4 vicinity. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to altitude of about seven kilometers, then uh, face about 10 degree over horizon, and then after that we're gonna blast our engines full speed ahead. Now in terms of uh, maneuverability, this ship could be more maneuverable. It's not really as maneuverable as the X-wings from the actual Star Wars, uh, but that's mostly because I didn't really put that many elevons. You can definitely make this more maneuverable if you add more elevons or if you uh, you know, maybe change the wing position or something. Uh, I'm not particularly worried about that right now because it flies well and it, it does everything else I needed to do. I forgot to mention, I also added uh, four antennas right here just to make it look like an actual X-Wing. So right here, there's actually... Uh, I can release them. Here we go. It does look like an X-Wing a little bit more that way. Unfortunately, these, of course, will use up some of my um, electricity, but that's okay. So let's... Uh, we're going to make the angle of attack approximately 10 degrees. And now we're going to abuse the Rapier Engine superpower at max speeds. So as you can see, I'm already going at ridiculously high speeds, way above the limit, essentially. But that's okay. As long as nothing burns down, nothing explodes, I should be fine. Oh boy, I think my antennas might actually explode. I hope not. We'll find out soon enough. Uh, all right, so we're going at, at 900 already. A thousand and this is not even look at look at the TWR here it's ridiculously high oh boy I, I that's not a good sign a lot of my things are burning uh, burning up already if I'm lucky enough they will not explode but essentially this is why our pure engines are so much better at lower altitudes than um, ramjets or anything else really because these guys are just power horses look at that I'm going at 1500 and it's still above one TWR. Okay, nothing exploded. I got lucky. I may be even be able to get it to 1600, maybe not. And as soon as we get, uh, as soon as you see the surface speed falling, that's when you should enable your other engines. There we go, all right. So I enable my secondary mode, and now all I need to do is get to the apoapsis of about 80 kilometers. Right now, stop. Okay, so now all we need to do is face toward prograde so that we don't actually lose any speed. And um, basically we'll be uh, uh, as aerodynamic as possible. And wait until the apoapsis. As soon as we um, stop burning and so on, I'm going to try to create a, a maneuver node and then basically get into orbit. But uh, as you can see, this is not a very difficult flight it's not a very difficult SSTO to make and it's actually kind of I think I kind of like the looks of this I mean it's not as Star Warsy as I, as it could be I, the front here can definitely be a little bit uh, better doesn't really look as realistic I think oh this is super hot isn't it uh, but you know what it's it looks like an X-wing and it, it flies like one so there you go uh, so let's make a maneuver node here uh, too much we're gonna make this so that we actually get to to a good enough orbit and so we just need about 400 uh, meters per second we can start turning this is why i brought those uh, solar panels because without them i would not be able to control my ship right now and we have uh, over 400 delta v according to this calculation in the thingy here but i think i have more actually i may actually have more if you are struggling getting to that point you may actually want to remove some mono propellant as well because this will reduce your weight not not by much but by a little bit so we still have liquid fuel, we still have a lot of liquid fuel actually, uh, way more than oxidizer, meaning that you can easily return back to Kerbin and fly around on the, all of that liquid fuel that you have left. It can actually, if, if you're really struggling, you may even reduce this, I, I think I had like a hundred, you may reduce this to like, I don't know, like a 50 or something. Uh, Alright, so in about a minute we're gonna burn. I got really lucky this time that nothing exploded, because sometimes it does explode if you go way too fast in lower atmosphere, as you can imagine. But this is also why I added the antennas here, because I knew that they might explode, but at the same time they give this really x wingy look. 
that I was look I was going for. All right, so let's accelerate time a little bit, and we're gonna burn for right around now. And steady, steady, steady. High G's here, super high G's. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, why are we spinning so so much? Uh, so yes, there we go. Perfect orbit. Look at that. Uh, 84 periapsis, 93 apoapsis, definitely in orbit. And all we need to do now is figure out if we want to keep traveling, exploring the universe, or if we want to return back to Kerbin. It says here I have 429 um, delta V left. Let me just see if this is correct because I want to just transfer everything to my tanks. All right, so everything is in this tank right here, and it looks like, yes, 429 Delta V left. Uh, possibly not enough to escape Kerbin, but I think uh, enough to maybe get a slightly higher orbit than this. So you could probably get to like 200 kilometers orbit. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to decelerate and try to return to Kerbin. So I want to see how this works in terms of... Um, actual return so i'm gonna use my pancake maneuver where i try to go uh, horizontally or perpendicularly to my uh, ve vector of velocity in order for me to slow down as much as i can i'll show you what i mean in a second let's actually just add deceleration node right here and we're going to decelerate and try to return back to Kerbin and possibly hopefully someone hopefully land if it doesn't work that's fine if it works awesome all right my x-wing is ready to return back home to Kerbin, and let's do it Okay, that's enough. I think this will give me a periapsis of 54. Excellent. So now all I'm going to do is wait for this no a node right here. And once we get there, we're going to attempt to land. If it doesn't work. Well, I tried. I have a feeling landing this will be really difficult, mostly because of the gear placement. So I may end up losing like a wing or two or possibly three. So landing this will be interesting. Uh, taking off is easy, but landing is hard. And also my nose is still red, so that's not good. That means that things are still really hot. So I'm going to initiate the pancake maneuver, as I call it. Basically, you go sort of perpendicular to your vector velocity, kind of like this. And what this does is essentially all of the air that's coming in is hitting your wings here and slows you down dramatically. So this is probably one of the better ways of re-entering as SSTO. If you try to go nose first or engines first, uh, some designs may not actually be able to survive that. So I've learned the hard way that this is probably the better way of doing this. Do this until about 40 kilometers and then if you still have fuel, you may actually want to use some fuel to slow down. If you don't have any fuel left, then uh fly nose first and you know pray for the best now my periapsis and apoapsis are dropping dramatically right now but the one problem is that i also um because i'm in the, on the dark side of Kerbin right now i'm not getting any more electrical charge so that's a bit of a problem uh so i do have to try to get uh to lower atmosphere as soon as possible otherwise i'm going to be in a bit of a pickle uh my orbital speed is decreasing but not fast enough unfortunately and let's just see what happens. This is going to be really interesting. It's going to be a really interesting re-entry. Now, I, I think I'm going to use up some of my fuel. I'm actually going to turn this way and blast my engines full speed ahead. Use up all of the fuel. And... Now we're going to turn sideways again and hope that we can possibly decelerate a little bit faster this time because we're going to be entering the atmosphere a little bit more dramatically with a slightly higher angle of attack. And obviously this is not how it's been done in the movies. You've never seen an X-Wing trying to re-enter in such a matter. But you know what? Uh, it's not a very good design. Honestly, when they were making those uh, models for X-Wing, Y-Wing and other wings, they're really hard to control, they're really hard to fly, and I'm not even sure how Luke Skywalker was able to traverse the galaxy and the universe in his somewhat interesting looking uh, spaceship. So, alright, so here comes the first burn, I'm gonna turn other side, and then this side again. This will hopefully reduce our orbital speed, you can see it's already dropping dramatically. Uh, for, as long as I'm above 30 kilometers, I should be okay doing this, but I also have no more battery left. No more, no more charge left, so I'm relying on uh, my own sort of manual controls here. 
All right, so it looks like we are re-entering the atmosphere. I should probably point myself toward... Okay, I cannot control the ship anymore. That's great. That's awesome. Well, that's nice. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see if we actually re-enter safely or not. And because I have no more energy left, unfortunately, I will not be able to control the spaceship really, uh, really easily. Okay. Whoa. Hey, we've survived. Look at that. Awesome. So, excellent. Uh, now, let's see if we can actually land. I don't think we can, but is this... I don't even know if this is land or not. Uh, I'm going to have to enable my engines in a second. All right, it's flipping way too much. I don't know if I can actually control it, but I'm going to try to run my engines a little bit just to see if I can possibly slow down and just point it toward the ground so I can get out of the stall right here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, we're going toward the ground really, really fast right now. This is not good. This is not looking good. Okay. Get out of the stall. Get out of the stall. Oh, stop stalling. Stop stalling. All right, looks like we regained control, but now I'm noticing that there's no actual land near us. So this is going to be a water landing, unfortunately. And it's not a very, a very smooth landing either. It looks like I'm going to be landing sort of sideways-ish. Mostly because I totally have no energy left. This ship is really hard to control right now. And it just keeps going right for some reason. I don't know why it, why it likes going right so much. All right, I'm not sure why my ship keeps spinning in such a di funny direction, funny way, but I'm going to try to land this on the water um, as well as I can. I'm going to release the gear. And why does it keep turning? I have no idea. There's something going on with the stall not really being resolved, even though I have my engines engaged and everything else. And, well, this is going to be a relatively nice and easy landing because we're just landing in the water. And look at that. It's kind of like a helicopter almost. And boom. Well, looks like this is a success. It's an underwater landing, right? Cool. Just like in Star Wars. Anyway, let's never speak about this again. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little SSTO from Star Wars video. And let me know what you think about the design. Let me know wh why you think it was spinning so much. And check out some of the other Kerbal Space Program videos right here. Game you later and bye-bye. Holy cow, most G forces endured 11.2. Jebediah Kerman survived 11.2 Gs. That is crazy. Most astronauts can't even do 10. Jebediah Kerman, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and bye bye.